Hey guys, a number of people have asked me which heroes are most important to awaken specifically for the epic heroes, as you do get a reasonable amount of this currency, which is the epic sage soulstone currency. If you're wondering how to get them, well, the most reliable way is through Tired. You can get these fairly reliably through Tired. Often it comes from the 10 interval stage reward, so around 50, 60, 70, 80. I think you get some at like 20 as well. So there's quite a lot of epic sage soulstones available through Tired. You do also sometimes get them from events. You can quite fairly often get them from Guild Boss. Not super often, but you can get them. And you can, of course, buy specific ones from the Awakening Shop as well. And to get this currency, you need to sell Epic Heroes. So standard Epic Heroes will give you 100 of these tokens. A fusible Epic Hero, such as Lightlock or Fiowin or Livian, will give you 80 tokens instead of 100. So there are a few ways to get hold of these, but the main question is, who do you prioritize giving them to once you do have them? Well, in my opinion, the first three heroes that stand out are going to be Raph, Deimos, and Dolores. Dolores only really needs her first awakening. This increases the inspiration bonus on her ultimate by 20%. It's a very valuable bonus. It's 20% extra of her attack will go into her attack boost created by the inspiration buff. So A1 for Dolores is really huge. If you have a Dolores and you do have an awakening soul stone, I would definitely recommend it. Dolores to six star, full attack gear as much as you can. Put her in the Glacier set ideally, in my opinion, as it gives her more attack based on her max HP. Her max HP is atrocious, but hey, you'd want as much damage on that as you can get. And do make sure she's Awakened 1 just to get 20% more of her attack into the bonus from Inspiration. So Dolores A1, I would say, is the biggest priority, partly because it's only one. It's very easy to do. After that, these next two, I don't think every account necessarily needs to. I do think, though, there's a massive benefit to be had. So... For Raph, for example, the first awakening just gives him guaranteed crits on this trigger, which is based on every four attacks. The second is just some crit damage, which is nice. The third is burning, which is okay. The fourth is some penetration, which is nice. But the fifth gives him 30% lifesteal while his ultimate is active, which is, it's really good. It helps in a lot of content. I know some people have boosted him straight to five just to use him in a lot of content and have had a lot of success and joy from that. He can keep himself alive in Guild Boss at A5 as well. So if you have too many fighters and you can't quite get the healing on them, Raph, if timed right and if he's got a good enough build, will be able to survive Guild Boss by himself. It's kind of crazy. That being said, as I've said in a previous video, about a month and a half after starting the game, you will get a Soul Stone for Raph. So right here, Raph Soul Stone. This can only be used on Raph. So my recommendation for players, if you can wait, I would wait to get this one. Otherwise, it will sit in your inventory forever and you will never use it. And it's just kind of a waste of a Soul Stone. And they are quite a bit harder to get Soul Stones. So... I would recommend getting Raph to A4 and waiting for this Soulstone to pop up to give it to him. After Raph, I do think Deimos is a really good one. So this is a bit mixed. I, I guess I should caveat this. Deimos is a good epic fighter. He is really nice. He has some good solid damage, but he is really built to focus a single target for a long time due to his tearing passive stacks. He wants to be sitting on the same target to build up as many stacks as he can and to ult on them and just to go ham on a single target and just eviscerate them, right? So the main content for that is, of course, Guild Boss. It's not useful at all in Gear, gear Raid 1. Gear Raid 2 even is not good enough, and Gear Raid 3 he can't hit anything. So he's not a Gear Raid hero. He is good in the Artifact Material Raid, because you can put him to the side and just focus down the Salazar boss. So I do think he's really good in the Artifact Material Raid. He's not good in the Basic Trial. He's okay in Arena, but not fantastic. So really, he's a Guild Boss and an Artifact Material Raid hero. But for Guild Boss, he is... I think unquestionably the best epic DPS in the game and probably top five DPS in the game as well. I, th I near about. And that's including the heroes from the Forerunner that aren't released yet. So right now he's definitely top five DPS on Guild Boss, including legendaries and probably top three. I would say Zilla 2, Salazar and Deimos are the top three DPS in Guild Boss right now. And part of the reason is his awakenings are just so good for Guild Boss. The first one gives him some lifesteal, so that's not too good, but it can help. The second is crit rate, which helps gearing. The third is more tearing stacks, which is really nice, because that's just going to be increasing his damage by another 15%. The fourth one is some penetration, so to get through the defense of the boss. And the fifth one is when he reaches full tearing stacks, which will be very quick in Guild Boss and will last the entire fight, he ignores 15% of their defense. Guild Boss has very high defense, so this is massive. It's a huge damage gain. So I personally really rate a A5 Deimos. He's just so valuable in your Guild Boss team. You can get a lot more damage out, get more blood score, and get more rewards daily from Guild Boss. So 
The heavy caveat to this is it's mainly for guild boss. If you don't care too much and you don't want to focus on your guild boss team yet, which is totally fine and a very valid thing to leave until later, then he's not as important. But if you do want to focus on your guild boss team, then Deimos is incredibly good and his awakenings are just ridiculously strong. So after that, I think for more general use, if you're trying to progress your gear raids, I think for gear raid one, you have a couple of choices. Lightlock benefits a lot from his awakenings for if you're using him as a DPS hero. There is a change coming that will likely make him less useful in gear raid one, but that could be a ways off yet. So for the sake of progressing and getting power of dominance to get clearances earlier, I think it's still valuable. The first awakening increases the damage by a notable margin, so I think that is worth it. Up to his third awakening, I don't think this is very good. It's very hard for him not to break the stacks in gear raid one because he will be taking damage from the boss and these stacks will fall away, but it isn't bad. It does help, but getting to seven stacks is kind of unlikely. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the third awakening and the fifth awakening increases the range, which is nice. But if you're progressing and trying to get through to stage 18, maybe 13 to 18, I don't think you really need it. So for light lock, I think one awakening can really help quite a lot. That's what I would recommend. If you want to make progress in gear raid one, I would suggest A1 light lock and Iona as well. She gains a lot from her awakenings. I haven't awakened her because I pulled a bunch of mages, but she's very attainable if you buy the like two or three pound pack. Obviously you don't have to, but I think she's someone worth mentioning because a lot of people do have her. So her first awakening will trigger a star burst on each attack during her ultimate. The star burst are like an AOE explosion of damage that slow the enemies as well. So it's more damage on her ultimate, super important, massive damage increase, really valuable. Second is attack. Third one is 50% more damage on Starburst, so that's a lot of damage. The fourth is crit rate to make it easier to build her. And the fifth increases the duration of her ultimate by five seconds. So if you are struggling in gear raid one, Iona is actually a beast. She is considered one of the best AOE mages, especially from the epics on the Forerunner server. But that's because we all had her at A5 because we'd been playing for so long. So I think it was easy for me especially to overlook that. So I think a lot of people were disappointed in her when they got her because she was not doing quite as much damage as they expected. I think it's because she relies heavily on her awakenings. With awakenings, Iona does a lot of damage. She is a very, very powerful mage, but the awakenings do make a lot of difference. If you do rely on her for gear raid one and you think you will for the foreseeable future, definitely at least pick up A1, but A3 to five are still good as well. So those are the two I would recommend most for gear raid one. If you do have Greed, he is kind of an uncommon pull. I think his awakenings are very good as well. Again, a gear raid one hero. Triggering his attacks both together is really nice with a higher chance as well. More damage. Increasing the cap on his damage bonus is good. More crit rate for easier building. And the fifth one, his ultimate is triggering both the special effects at the same time. So I do like Greed's as well. But again, you're only going to use him in gear raid one. And he is really quite expensive. So I would lean more towards Iona. So if you want to progress in gear raid two... If you did get a solder from the fusion event, I think her awakening one is really nice. It will give her a big shield when she ultimates, which does help quite a lot. I would not bother with the rest of her awakenings though, but the first awakening does make a big difference. The best two epic healers in the game for gear raid two are Vortex and Midan. For Vortex, I do like pretty much all of his awakenings, but especially the first awakening, which grants a random shield to allies every 25 seconds. It's just, it helps. It really does help. It's random, so it's not reliable, but it's just more survivability, which is nice. And the third one is healing multiplier times 20% on platform units. And those are the guys who are going to struggle to keep alive the most. Your other healers and your DPS, the mages or marksmen, if you're using them, this will help keep them alive. So I do like awakening one to three on Vortex, especially the, the second one even gives him a bunch of HP, which will scale into his healing and make him more survivable. So I do like one to three, especially for Vortex. Next for Midan, the first one will grant her 10% damage reduction while ulting, which is nice. It's more survivability for her and keeping your healers alive is very important. You're mainly going to want to use her ultimate during the earth shakes from the gear raid 2 boss. So I do quite like the awakening one on Midan. Awakening 2 is the same as Vortex, some HP to keep her alive, which is great. And also will scale into her healing because she is another HP scaling healer. Her awakening 3 is just 10% more healing on her basic attacks, which is of course very good. Awakening 4 is Rage Regen, and Awakening 5 is 20% more healing while shielded. I don't think this one is as important because your shields are going to break a lot. If you do have shields, you don't need as much healing, right? So usually when you are shielded, it's from overhealing from Vortex, so you're at 100% HP already. So for Midan, I think the first to the third, again, similar to Vortex, I would say one to three are pretty good. One on both of them is pretty good as well, so you don't need to go all the way to three. In Gear Raid 2, if you use Baron to tank, then he has some pretty good awakenings. His ultimate shield is quite nice, 
but mainly I like him for his unyielding state. He, with skill ups, has 8 seconds where he cannot die, and he doesn't die afterwards as well, you can save him. But with Awakenings, he gets more bonuses. The first one gives him some stats during his ultimate shield. It's pretty good, but it's not incredible, so I don't think too much of it. 100 defense, similarly, I don't care too much. But Awakening 3 is 3 seconds extra of the unyielding state on his passive, which is, I think, the main reason Baron is so good, especially in Gear Raid 2. I rely on this a lot in my runs, even just to hold the boss at the end if everyone falls apart. 11 seconds of unyielding is really, really good. So I like the third Awakening for Baron. If you want to go all the way, the fourth Awakening reduces damage by 5%. That's a pretty good general reduction. And the fifth one recovers 50% HP at the end of his passive. So that's pretty good. But generally, I think the third Awakening is decent, but I don't know if I would recommend soul stoning into it. It's worth considering if you are trying Gear Raid 2 and... Maybe a few more seconds on Baron would help you out. It is pretty good for dealing with the rolling boulders. So now let's look at Gear Raid 3 heroes. We have Tariel now. Tariel is really quite a good hero, mainly for her ultimate. Map scale attack for 25 seconds at max skill up. She does a lot of good damage with her basic attacks. So it is a lot of solid damage. It is a good amount of damage from limitless shots. And it's just, it's pretty good in Gear Raid 3 because she can help other lanes. You can use her in campaign to help and you can use her in arena. So Tariel is a really solid marksman. She's actually a really good single target damage dealer as well. So she does do quite well in Guild Boss, surprisingly. So as for her awakenings, the first awakening increases her base attacks damage by 10%. That's pretty good. You want damage, 10% damage upright. I think it's very valuable. The second is some flat damage increase, and the third gives 5% rage to her allies when she ults, which is kind of weird. It's nice, I guess, but it's kind of specific. The fourth is some attack speed, but the fifth is really the valuable one for Tariel. Killing a target with limitless shots, her ultimate extends its duration for 3 seconds. So in Gear Raid 3, with a Dolores boosting her, Tariel can just pick off half the map. She'll just keep going and she'll just churn through all the enemies and murder them. So A5 Tariel is really, really good. A1 Tariel still is quite good. But going anywhere in between is not particularly worth it. Either one or five are the main two to go for. Besides that, I think the main one I want to focus on is someone I haven't used a lot on this account, but it is Theowin. So Theowin is a fusible epic hero, and he focuses on throwing AoE glaives out. They kind of spin around and they hit enemies in an area around them, and they can apply some slow effects as well, this hamstring effect. His ultimate throws a bigger one as well. And yeah, it's just AoE damage with some slowing in it. He's not a very high damage dealer though. That's important to know. Fiowin can do decent damage, but it's not very high. With his first awakening, it increases the slow effect from 50 to 75%, which is quite a significant difference. The second is some damage. The third gives him 50 rage back when triggering his large saber. It doesn't tell you how often it triggers. It just says after attacking multiple times, whatever that is, he holds the large saber. So every some amount of hits, he will gain 50 rage, which is nice. And his rage cap does go down to a thousand at max so 50 is actually not too bad the fourth awakening is 25 attack speed and again the fifth awakening extends the aoe of his ultimate the blade hurl effect i do like the fifth awakening it is pretty good it helps a lot in gear raid 3 in the final stages and it's pretty good in airborne arena as well you use this and you can use a marry and you can really slow enemies down and just butcher the waves quite effectively I wouldn't prioritize this over someone like Tariel or the other heroes mentioned, which is why this is kind of at the end of the video, but this can help. It's not a bad awakening. It does it does help quite a bit. Brienne is another marksman. She's more of a, a damage burst focus marksman than Fiowin. Less crowd control, but a bit more damage. She still is kind of split between single target and AoE damage. Her first awakening increases the penetration of her ultimate by 30%, so it gets through physical armor by 30%, which is nice. The second is some attack. The third increases her passive split shot effect by 20% damage. The fourth grants her some crit rate to make it easier to build her. And the fifth increases the split shot number of arrows fired. It does help. It does make her better, but mainly the first awakening is all that's required. So if you do need some more marksman damage, Brienne is a good option and she's mostly dependent on her first awakening. The third awakening is quite good as well because this is 20% damage on her split shot, but really the main damage comes from her ultimate multi shot. So I think A1 Brienne is the more the most valuable of her awakenings. You can believe it. I nearly missed Maul because he is the only he is one of the only epics I'm still missing. So Maul, I don't have him. I need to talk about this guy. His ultimate is a massive, ridiculous damage nuke, and that is the majority of his kit, though he does have a great attack range, hitting multiple enemies in AoE, and he does defense break enemies as well with this passive on some of his AoE attacks. So, Maul's Awakenings. The first one means that his ult shark will freeze for 3 seconds. This is super good. People even use this in Gear Raid 1 just to slow the enemies down. 
used with someone like Mary, rotating the two of them, you can just really block the enemies from hitting the wall for quite a while. The second one is 5% crit rate, which helps a lot. The third one is a pretty big slow. It's 5 seconds of 75% reduction in movement speed for the enemies hit by his AoE auto attack when this procs every 20 seconds. So it's a really big slow for quite a while, which I find very good in the arena. The fourth awakening is penetration of 5%, and the fifth awakening is minus 5 cost, which does help using him in more general content, getting him out earlier in arena, and just generally using him. So... All of Maul's Awakenings are very good. The first Awakening is especially good for the Freeze. This buys you a lot of time. So generally, I would say the first Awakening is incredibly valuable on Maul. But honestly, all of them are pretty good as well. But definitely prioritize the first Awakening. So that's it. Those are the ones I wanted to really cover. Some of them do gain a lot. Like Olag's is really nice, 10% shield strength. But he just doesn't care anyway. So he doesn't really need it. Overall, I would prioritize A1 Dolores first. If you're focusing on Guild Boss, A5 Deimos all the way, it's just crazy strong. For general progression and Guild Boss and Arena and stuff like that, getting your Wrath to A5 eventually is really good. For Gear Raid 2, an A1 Isolde is really nice, and getting your Vortex in mid and to A1 to A3 is really helpful. In Gear Raid 1, all of the Awakenings on Iona will help a lot, and A1 on Lightlock will help if you're using him to DPS. In Gear Raid 3, I would focus on Tario, though she does really want A5, Brianna A1 is pretty good, and Fiowin can help a lot, but again, he does kind of want A5. Those are the standout heroes that I would recommend getting Awakenings into that are most commonly achieved. If you do get hold of a Lunaria as well, her first three Awakenings in particular are very good. The fourth Awakening is nice, but the fifth Awakening does immobilize enemies for half a second when she hits them with, with the Dark Moon arrows. It's pretty good. It does help CC enemies, but she's going to be blowing them up anyway, so I do prefer the first Awakening increasing her attack speed and the third one increasing the chance of firing them from her basic attacks i think the first three are most valuable on lunaria anyway that's it those are the ones i wanted to cover these in my opinion are the most important epic heroes for general progression i hope it was helpful and informative to you if you have any suggestions or if there's any epic heroes that you think i may have missed out that are very good with their awakenings then do leave a comment below as it can help other people out thank you guys very much for watching have a great day take care and bye bye